It's 11.49 and the meeting, the main business meeting will return to order. The uh, meeting would like to hear the report of the Committee of the Whole. Mr. Dashoff or uh, Ms. Dinneroff, do you have a report? The committee reports with the suggestion that the business meeting take up the four and six proposal in the manner of uh, fill in the blank. Okay, well, then when we get to that, we will probably, the, the first thing to do is to create a blank in the motion and take suggestions for the possibilities to fill the blanks in the current four and six. Okay, before we return to the agenda, I would like to call on the Committee of Tellers to give a report on the Mark Protection Committee election. All right, Tim Ellingworth, I think we've both spoken, so nobody needs us for bingo. I'm bingoing myself. I'm also bingoing him. <laughs> bingo section. My name is Todd Dashoff. Uh, Mr. Ellingworth and I counted the ballots from the Mark Protection vote. Uh, there were 128 ballots express expressing a preference, which meant we needed 64 to elect. On the first round, no one had a majority. Uh, we eliminated the first, the lowest total, recounted, and Donald Eastlake was elected. We then proceeded to a second round, which elected Stephen Boucher, and to a third round, which elected Bruce Farr. Okay, um, let's see. Is there any objection to uh, commending the tellers and instructing the ballots be destroyed? Hearing none, the tellers are thanked for their work and instructed to destroy the ballots. Thank you. <laughs> the results of the election are now official. Hmm. Oh, I was, oh, I was going to hope to, I thought we'd get two, two birds with one stone, but we, we, he's, already, he's already stepped away. Okay, that takes us back down into the agenda. What's, oh, I'm sorry, what first does the member rise? Question of privilege. Uh, the member will come to the microphone and state their question of privilege. Yes, Mr. Reynolds. Yes, I wish you to declare name. double bingo. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Reynolds, and all other members, as much as the chair does appreciate the um, amusement value of this, no other, per this is not a valid question of privilege. Uh, take it elsewhere. We don't have enough time to keep that up. Do not do that again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, where we were, yes, open source software. We are back to the resolutions. Do note that items seven, eight, and nine on the slide number nine have been dealt with. Slide an uh, item six also actually so items six through nine have already been dealt with so only items four and five here are still left. It was adopted at the very beginning of the preliminary business meeting when we moved to suspend the rules and modify section rule 1.2. We jumped into that. So we are on item four B24 open source software. Let me get to it there. B24, open source software, resolved that the WSFIS business meeting recommends that software, including but not necessarily limited to, custom written applications, spreadsheets and databases, but not including the hardware, operating systems, or commercial applications upon which such software is dependent, used by a seated Worldcon committee to carry out any function mandated by, this, by the, const it should say the Constitution, actually, by the Constitution, including but not necessarily limited to administration of the Hugo Awards and future Worldcon selection shall be made available to any member upon request or as an open source project. That if a committee makes such information available upon request, it must make readily available contact information for feedback, including bug reports, that no Worldcon shall be obliged to use any patch or upgrade suggested during its proceeding period, 
and that such patches or upgrades be considered for inclusion if the software is to be reused by Worldcons seated after the submission is made. With the exception of the typo the chair noted in passing there, uh, the item as printed on page 28 of the agenda is the motion. Is the motion. There somewhere, uh, I mentioned it in passing. The, the constant. This should be the on that on the fifth line of uh, the first clause. Uh, I was going to try and set debate. Uh, for what purpose does the member rise? First question of privilege. All right, member will state their question of privilege. Um, I, w I was given to understand that uh, one of the members of the committee, Ron Oaks, who was here previously, um, really wished to speak on this matter and had to leave the room to attend to his duties for this convention. Uh, therefore, I would like to move to lay this m matter aside uh, and, to and take up the next matter so that he has time to return. That's a motion to lay the, mo lay the motion on the table. That means the American version, not the British version. That temporarily sets the motion aside without, without setting a time to pick it back up. We, it takes a two-thirds vote. Is there a second to lay the motion on the table? Second. With two-thirds vote being necessary to lay the motion on the table, it's not debatable. All those in favor of laying the motion on the table, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. There being two-thirds in the affirmative, the motion is laid upon the table. Item B25 is uh, MPC funding. Yes, for what purpose does the member rise? Parliamentary, parliamentary inquiry. Member will come to the podium and uh, lectern and uh, state their parliamentary inquiry. Jack Foy, uh, do we need to set a time at which we will take up the motion again? No, the motion to lay on the table sets the motion aside with no specific time for picking it up. The way you get it back is to make the motion to take from the table any time there's nothing pending. Thank you. Thank you. And take from the table takes only a majority, by the way. All right. Last resolution, MPC funding. Uh, hmm. the, well, I'm the chairman of the MPC as well, and I'm trying to decide if I should. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to yield the floor because I'm going to make a request. Yes. I yield the, I yield the chair, uh, the, the gavel to Mr. Dashoff. I'll let you get off the stage first. <laughs> the chair recognizes Mr. Stanley. Kevin Stanley, chairman of the Mark Protection Committee. Uh, I note debate time has not been set. That's true. Go ahead. Uh, the chair suggests four minutes for debate. Is there, is there any objection? The, he's the chair now, not me. So we've got four and ten. Jesse's going to keep track. Any other suggestions? Eight. Eight. I heard a six. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, All right. Any other numbers? We have, we have ten, eight, six, four, and two. We will start with ten. All members wishing to have ten minutes, please raise your hands. All those opposed, the noes carry it in the opinion of the chair. Uh, eight minutes, all those in favor, all those opposed. In the opinion of the chair, it is set at eight minutes. The chair now recognizes Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chairman, uh, I believe we need a two, a two minute technical timeout at this point. I move a recess of two minutes. We stand in recess for two minutes. <laughs>